Welcome back guys, it's your boy the Ace, back with another special. So today we're going to look at Just Cat, which in essence is a simple RAT or remote administration tool. Now this is based on a Windows script host, first inspired by Coadic and JS Rat Pi. The aim is not just to create a feature packed, powerful remote control tool, but rather to achieve a lightweight, undetectable rat inspired by the use of Cobalt Strike and other C2 loader capable applications. So buckle up, turn up those speakers and let's, let's go. go. Now Just Cat features a reverse shell connection, automatic online presence and no file drops onto disk, which for me is a mega plus, especially when it comes to these kind of tool sets. Now traffic encryption is using RC4, which refers to a method of securing data transmitted over a network by encrypting it within the RC4 or reverse cipher for algorithm. Now, this is a stream cipher, meaning it encrypts the data by combining the plain text data with some pseudo random cipher streams bit by bit. Next, we have J script code obfuscation utilizing XOR. What this means is that the obfuscation process employs XOR or exclusive OR operations, a fundamental binary operation used in cryptography and logic based processes. It also uses command execution capabilities, just like you have in other C2s, it has upload and download features. The next significant point for me is the shellcode injection facilities using .NET to JS. Now what this means is that the process of injecting and executing shellcode on a target system is made possible through the conversion of encapsulation of .NET executable code into then JS or JavaScript. This allows the shellcode to be executed within environments or contexts where JavaScript is executed, such as within a web browser or within a Windows host context, the Windows script host or WSH environment. That's enough of the theory, let's lab this bad boy up. We can go into the repo by Han001 and we have JS Cat. So as we can see here, JS Cat is been archived since 2020. But regardless of this fact, being a four year repo, it is still interesting and it does still work, believe it or what not. So let's saying? see what we're dealing with. So we have JS Cat. We can see here it's either some Chinese characters, but that's not an issue because the installation guide is quite clear so first we can get the repo so we've got that repo we can just cd into the repo itself and now we just do a pip free install for requirements now that's done all we need to do is run the python free under the jks pi to run the server great now you can see it's running and we have a server with our ip address so we can see some specifics here occurring. The first and most prominent one is that this 30 util is running under our machine or attacking boxes local IP with the port address 6600. And then we have this in it. So you can see here the self hosted application is under this in it and it comes under this CSSJS and then it uses C script to fire that JS on the Windows host. And as you know, C script is already natively installed on Windows machines and is used to interact and fire script files. So let's take this whole entire line and put it into our Windows 11 box and see if that works. Here we have it access denied and let's see if anything was flagged on that front. Now you can see here under Windows Defender, which is on, it has caught the script that we tried to fire directly 
And if we go into details, we can see exactly why that is. Now you can see here, it's running under command line and it's trying to run exactly what we said it was trying to run. It's categorized as a Trojan and the program is dangerous, can execute commands from the attacker and level severe. So it looks like Defender is aware of this, but what can we do to mitigate and get around it? Let's see. So if we leave JSCAT open for now and we open another terminal, now what we can do is wget and what we can get is just that init file instead of everything else that was combined with it. So we could just, just grab this bit and then paste that into here. Lovely. So what do we have here? Here we have that init. We can move init to desktop would be nice. So now we have this init file sitting on desktop, as you can see here. And just to verify that it is the file to hand, we can see it into desktop, Alistair, and then we can cat init. And now we can see everything. Now what I wanna do is use SCP to actually copy over directly to the Windows machine that init file that we just created on the desktop on the attacking box. So if we go into here, we go SCP, name of the box, and then the location that we want to paste, hit enter, password of the attacking box. And now you can see that's been transferred. Now we have that init file that hasn't flagged up Defender. We could try run that again and see what happens. So if we run, um, like I mentioned, it's running under CS script, which is native here. And then what we could do, we can slash slash E to run it under JS script again. And then use the name of the file which was init and then here you can see on the attacking box we have a callback already starting to happen lovely miss game over we was able to get a reverse shell back into the attacking box bypass defender completely sleeping as we can see from here nothing from defender no scans happening didn't find anything what we can do now is say help. And in terms of usage for JSCAT, we got these sessions. There is no autocomplete, which is a shame. Uh, sessions. And then here we can see we got one session. So we can open that one session with a tag I with a number of the session, which is one session. I1, is that interact with it? Or is it sessions with an S? There we go. So now we're in. Now we can go to help again. Now we've got info, sleep, processes. We can cat paths, run. We can run shell commands, upload, download. We can JS run. We can inject either B64 shell code. We can see jobs are running. We have aliases, show, show alias names, and we can go back into more sessions. Okay, so if I say show who am I? There we have it. On the receiving box, I do note that this needs to be kept running though. That's the only thing. So if we can maybe run this as a background process or artifact within the victim's machine that would be the creme de la creme do you know what i mean by the minute i've got a reverse shell back in windows defender is absolutely asleep and we get to do whatever we want at this point anything to do with a shell command so shell um so we notepad exe and there we have it I think that's where I'm going to leave it for now, but JSCAT, still a viable solution, very slick, and can be improved on. That was JSCAT, which we saw was designed 
focusing on lightweight execution, encryption, communication, and evasion. For me, it directly addresses the challenges posed by sophisticated defense systems. Its possible integration with other C2s like Cobalt Strike or Sliver enhances its application a multitude of times when it comes to simulating or addressing complex cyber attack scenarios. For me, it makes it a viable asset for security researchers, ethical hackers aiming to uncover vulnerabilities within systems before they can be exploited maliciously. Some ethical considerations remain paramount, of course. Tools such as JCAT, while powerful, demand a responsible use within the bands of legal and ethical frameworks. For the ethical hacker community, JS Script not only expands our arsenal for conducting thorough security assessments, but also underscores the continual need for innovation and ethical integrity in the face of evolving cyber threats. Remember, stay safe in the cyberspace. Hit the smash and the subscribe button. Peace out.